Hi, this is Bravo21. I am a glider pilot and sim developer. And today we're just going to talk about that tricky subject of flying assigned area tasks in gliding, uh, particularly in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We'll start with the idea of this, just this uh, basic task everybody's familiar with. The point is you're gonna, you've got to fly through the start, uh, go through turn point one, turn point two, turn point three and back, and the fastest home wins. The important detail here is each of these waypoints, e.g. TB2 here, has a radius. And that means if you go into that space, you're deemed to have reached that particular waypoint. That's all the radius means. But the key point to remember here is that the basic idea of all uh, gliding racing tasks is it's the fastest speed is what determines uh, your position in the, in the results at the end of the day. What assigned areas do is add a bit of flexibility of where you might be trying to get to for a given waypoint. E.g. for turn point three here, where it's currently a normal waypoint with a radius of a kilometre, you've got to, anywhere inside that radius counts as a win and, and you carry on and finish the task. Uh, for an assigned area, we might, for example, set this to 15,000 metres and the, this is the uh, task banner, uh, this AAT checkbox says, and I would like it to be an area. If you can see here, the colour of the radius changes to green for uh, an assigned area. Um, as opposed to just red for the, the regular ones anybody that's used this planner before will be used to. And then if I take, say, Unbay's actual flight uh, yesterday, I think, and uh, drop it here, you can see um, start TP1, TP2, TP3, and then finish. It's the planner kind of calculating how where did you get around the task. Now, the important point is the track log as it went into this radius was deemed to have reached TP1. When it went through this radius, it was deemed to have reached TP2. So the distances are the same for everybody. Everybody either got from start to TP1 or they didn't. It doesn't matter where they were inside that radius. An AAT area is different in that how far you penetrated into that area uh, determines the distance you flew. And you're going to choose how, to f how far to fly into that area by whether that the conditions and therefore the speed you're expecting to progress at is going to be higher inside that area or the bit of it you're deciding to fly in um, than it is on average the rest of the task, in which case you're going to increase your overall speed. This would be true for this area, for example, if say the wind was from the southeast and there was an awesome ridge running southwest to northeast and you're pretty confident that that ridge is just going to be going great. You'd get in here, you'd get onto the ridge, you'd zing up at the end, turn around, come back, and then continue your task. And that high speed section would increase your overall speed. Umbe obviously decided against that when she dipped her toe into it, kind of came out of it on this particular task. And you can see the task planner scoring that flight here, where it's saying start to finish, you took, well, Umbe took one hour, 40 minutes, and 37 seconds to get around the task. That's kind of a given. It's when did you cross that start line? When did you get back? Um, is going to check that you did go through the turn points you said you did. Uh, but at the end of the day, that, that time is what we're familiar with for any racing task. The distance here, 223.9 kilometres, is a little bit subtle, which is how do we calculate that? And the basic method is to credit, given that the time the pilot went round is fixed, it's when did they cross that line, when did they cross it coming back, it's what was the maximum distance they achieved. And... So I can do a thing here, which is click on draw the AAT route that was decided upon by this uh, calculation. And you can see it makes sense that the planner is deciding you went through the start, you arrived at the center of this waypoint. You achieve that by just simply getting into that area. You made it to the center of that waypoint by virtue of getting into the sort of eligibility radius there. And then here, the planner will actually look at every track point inside this area. I know there aren't many in this example. And decide which of those track points will give you the largest overall distance. So, And that will give you the highest uh, overall speed. Now, you're not limited to only one area. I think our starting position in the simulator is, hey, let's have hundreds of areas. Uh, in reality, it's not normally that complex. You know, it's quite common to have a, a real gliding task that's got an area in it, which will be in part of the country where it looks like intelligent pilot decision. 
uh, would be a useful part of the competition, you know, working out, you know, whether to go deep into it, which part of the area to use. That applies in firmling tasks and ridge tasks. Um, but here, equally, we don't need to just have one area. We can say, well, this will be an area. I'll give it a radius of 5,000 meters and call it an area. I'll take this one, say we'll make that one a 5,000 meter radius, give it an area. So this is a start, finish, and then three areas on, on the same task, which is uh, kind of going for it. If we hide the chart down here. And now if we redo, look at this track log and redraw this AAT route, this is now a little bit more subtle where you have to calculate what was your distance from there into this oops into this area into this area into this area and home which gives you the best overall distance so it kind of turns out wh whatever you're doing here is going to be fairly fairly typical for any because there's so few choices in this area it's a bit more subtle that you've got to try kind of every point in this area to try and work out which route through any point in here to any point in there to any point in there to the straight line home would give you the maximum overall distance, which I can show you here. The planner is calculated at 225.9 kilometers total. And given this 140.37, that was achieved in uh, 134.7. Okay, so the planner is doing all that, and that's that's how the areas work. But to make a make an intelligent decision in an area, you just got to kind of think about: Do I want to go deep into that area because it's going to improve my overall speed, or should I go to to this part of the area or that part of the area, or should I just you know dip dip a toe into it? And we're going to experiment with these in the Sim Soaring Club. We're going to have one more example with Poundy actually flying this task. I'm um, just dropping his track lag track log here. And you can see the planner saying, uh, congratulations, Poundy, you achieved eight kilometers. And the reason for that, if I click on his uh, track log, you can see he went through the start at the three minutes after nine, and then it hit the slew key. This is in the simulator. It's three minutes later, basically. And the planner will count. Here's his slew in here. Uh, the, you can see he gained this altitude from slewing. The calculate the planner will use the slew as a land out. It says you effectively landed out at that point, and where you landed out is not necessarily the best distance you achieved. This is true for an ordinary course, which is you know if you went if you progressed on course, turned around to get back into wind, for example, and then uh, do a finals into a field and land, the best distance you got was how far you'd managed to progress on course before you did that U turn. To come back into the field well the planner kind of calculates all that and no, we haven't looked at we could look at it if i close here where do you land out right back here and if i draw this bit you can see if you can see the plane moving he um that was the best distance he achieved on track but he flew on a little bit more before he hit slew so poundy i don't know what you're up to there <laughs> but you did slew so another feature what we can do here is you can say well you know this is a simulator for my own purposes can i just see how i did pretending that slew is not there and um i just you can uncheck this box so i uncheck this box and it turns out poundy slew again uh, you know a few seconds later uncheck the box he was all right for a while then he slewed again at 1002 uh Uncheck that box, no, it's slewed again. Uncheck it, <laughs> slewed, slewed, and then we're good. Okay, so basically I've kind of said, could you ignore that slew, could you ignore that slew? Until we get to the end, and then you find out that if we just look at these results here, um, where Umbe got round in 140.37, Poundy got round in 126.16. But uh, we all know um, he was kind of slewing on the way. But it kind of shows you um, these calculations have all, will also take into account if you go through this area, go through that area, go here and then land out back here. It will still do the same calculation, but you'll see these 
these lines subtly change according to well it decided you landed out there which quite often is just simply the end of the track log i mean if you've really landed out you you shamefacedly climb open your cockpit climb out of your glider um, and turn your logger off so it's you know it's just the end of the logger um, but that isn't necessarily the furthest distance you progressed like here for example you might do that come back here and land out okay so that is assigned area tasks in a nutshell it still is about whoever can go the fastest wins but the pilot just has more flexibility of how deep into a a zone turn point area do they want to go or not is completely up to them all right thanks for listening